Welcome to the video. Welcome to the video. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about how your refrigerator or freezer gets rid of heat. Now for those of you who aren't super familiar with it, there's two main components. Actually, let's call it three main components in a refrigeration circuit. One is going to be your compressor, which compresses the refrigerant gases into a superheated gas, which then goes through the condenser, which we're going to be showing you the condensers in this video using a thermal camera. So that should be really interesting. And then in that condenser, that's where it actually gets rid of the heat. And then after it goes through that, it actually cools it down, it condenses it back into a liquid, the refrigerant does, and then it gets pushed into what we call the evaporator. The evaporator is where then the, the liquid refrigerant expands and consequently drops that temperature significantly, which then allows the heat from inside of your refrigerator or freezer to be extracted. So that is the refrigeration cycle. Now there's a few different types of condensers and also evaporators. So we're gonna show you a little bit of both. So I'm gonna start right here in my kitchen. This is our KitchenAid refrigerator we've had for probably six or seven years now. And this is wrapped inside of this cabinetry here, which is actually something that you really wanna pay attention to because if you do this incorrectly, you can significantly reduce the lifespan of your refrigerator or freezer if you're not paying attention to how it actually gets rid of the heat. So later in this video, I'm also gonna show you how to clean the condenser if your refrigerator or freezer even has one. So if we look down here, the condenser coil on this particular unit is located at the bottom. This is after we cleaned it, by the way, but that's our condenser coil. So it's pulling air in underneath this unit and exhausting it out the back. So it's important that we are able to get that air out the top somewhere. With that in mind, I actually held all these cabinets out an extra two inches. You can see this offset right here. That coincides with the back. So you can see where it's a little bit warmer there along the back edge. That's because that air is pulling in underneath the refrigerator, going up the back and exhausting out the top. So right back here, you can see where that heat is rising up from the refrigerator, therefore creating a complete loop. So if you have the opportunity to think about that when you design your cabinetry, try to give a little bit of space behind it so that you can let that air naturally convect all the way up the back of the refrigerator. Now as our second example, we're gonna be taking a look at this portable cooler. This is the Anchor Solix Everfrost 2. This is able to cool down and hit temperature within about 15 minutes of when you turn it on. And it also has the ability to cool more evenly due to this fan that they've integrated into the lid. It's somewhat similar to like the way an air fryer works, except for that this is cooling it. The air moving quickly over the surface of whatever thing that you're trying to either heat up or cool down makes all the difference. The coils are still inside of here. The evaporator is still just inside of these inside walls. That is also a cool thing to mention is that this has a pretty significant temperature range all the way down to minus four degrees Fahrenheit. So it did just turn on. With two batteries, this unit will last about four days. And having two batteries also opens up the option of transporting the dead one to charge at a different location if for some reason you can't charge wherever the cooler is located. The design of the unit is actually surprisingly sturdy with me standing on top of it there's basically no deflection on the front of it there's also this little bar that you can attach additional accessories to which i do not have yet but there is a fishing pole holder which i am especially interested in my dad actually was intrigued by the cooler too because when you fish for salmon in alaska the fish that you freeze once they are rock solid no longer count towards your limit that might be kind of an interesting use case you also have an app where you can see the temperature remotely connect it to wi-fi and there's several things you can do through that you can charge it from the wall in the car or via solar or even via usb-c directly to one of the batteries another cool thing about the way this battery fits in here 
is that when you close this, you actually still have access to those USB ports right here. We just had to pop this little cover open. We took the cooler with us up to get some ice cream actually and tested out the ability for it to charge in the car, which is actually pretty cool. The way that they've designed it, it will allow you to basically uh, charge when the car is running, but as soon as you shut the car off, it will automatically stop charging. And that's because it has a voltage protection feature, which I actually think is very brilliant. But it worked out really well. We were able to get some ice cream and haul that back. We had it set to four below zero the entire time we had it on the trip. If you want to see all the highlights of taking the kids with me and uh, going out and getting this stuff, it was actually pretty fun. But I'm going to put all that at the end of the video because otherwise it's a little bit long before we'd be able to get back to looking with the thermal camera. Either way, the cooler is actually, I think, going to be super useful for our family and doing road trips. If you're interested, be sure to check the details in the description. Now this unit has a real compressor inside and a real condenser, and we can actually see the condenser just a little bit. If we peek down through these fins, you can see it back in there. That might be the compressor. Let's go take a look at my reach-in freezer in the basement. Oh yeah, look at that. So this is my a reach in freezer. You can see that all the coils are located in the side. And by coils, I mean a condenser. Basically, the tubes that release the heat are soldered or connected directly to the side of the freezer. And the entire side and top up here are the condenser. And that's why it's very important that you don't stack a huge pile of black walnuts on top of your freezer. <laughs> this is probably a bad practice. I actually did this partially on purpose because I knew that we'd have that additional heat up here to help make sure these are nice and dry. But we have too many black walnuts and it's definitely reducing the efficiency of my freezer. So if you can avoid it, don't pile stuff on top of your freezer like this because you're, you're, it's losing its ability to get rid of heat effectively. Evaporators are the spot that's actually absorbing the heat and this, since it's not a frost-free freezer, this is a manual defrost freezer, uh, all the shelves are actually what pull the heat out of the box and that's why they slowly accumulate condensation over time because they don't actually go through an active defrost. Alright, we made it out to the shed. Now it's pretty amazing how you can see with the thermal camera but we can't see anything on the regular camera. So you can see all the tubes going back and forth in that condenser. So knowing this information is important because out here I've made sure to keep some distance in between the freezers, the couple that we've got out here, in order to allow that airflow to still pass in between so that they can effectively operate. The nice thing about condensers that are located in the side of units like this is that you don't really have to clean them the same way that you do when you have a dedicated condenser and that's why we're going to go back inside now and clean the condenser on my refrigerator what? do you want to come see under the refrigerator yeah. what do you girls see down there yucky stuff do you see anything you recognize Look yucky stuff <laughs> i see corn I see corn. There is some corn down there, and that's from the sensory bin. I see beans, too. Uh, so if I pull this off back here, uh -oh. you can see that there is essentially a coil. Oh, man, look at how much stuff there is. Hey. You guys, we should have done this a long time ago. Oh, oh look, is this a frog? Dad, I did it. Did you do that? I did it. Wait, let me see. I feel something. Do you? Yeah. I do. So basically, we gotta pull all of that stuff out of there. Then I'll get it out. Oh, yeah! Oh, man. Yeah. Is that yucky, Zella? <laughs> Watch out. Here. What did you find? I found noodles. <laughs> Can you show me? Oh, wow. A noodle? Oh, yeah. Throw away that nasty stuff. Should we get a big vacuum cleaner so we can suck up all the junk we're finding? I 
Another thing you can do to try to break free some of the dust and debris back in there is to use an air compressor or I'm going to try this small leaf blower to basically blow the dust around but you want to have your vacuum running at the same time. That combination of the vacuum and the leaf blower worked really well. We did have quite a bit of dust to still get out into the room so in theory the more vacuums the better. Here's what the coil looks like after we cleaned it. We can see back in there pretty far actually. So we are on a mission, we're going to bring this with us so we can keep the ice cream perfectly hard for a uh, little brother who just showed up. We're going to have a little party for him one of these days. So we're going to bring the Everfrost to, and Oli just noticed something interesting. It drained the left battery all the way to 1%, and then the right battery is at 80. And you were thinking that it'd be nice if they drained together, right? Yeah, probably. <laughs> My thought is that if they drain separately like this, this would allow you to pop one battery out and go charge it somewhere else and then bring it back while the other one's still mostly charged. Right. So I think it works but good, but we're going to plug this thing in in the back of the flex. We'll see if it fits. Uh -oh. <coughs> it sort of fits. Nice. I saw in the app that there's a low voltage protection and I think that that's for when you're charging it in a, in a vehicle because the last thing you would want is for your your cooler to drain the, the, the battery in your vehicle. So by having that low voltage protection, which I'm gonna look at that in a little bit more detail in the app, I think it keeps it from draining your car battery when your car is off. All right, we're gonna start the car. And there, look, the battery input kicked up. Oh wait. We gotta give it a second here. Sorry. There we go, look at that, 86 watts. It's drawing right now. I'm ready, go drive. You ready to go drive? Okay. Dad, drive! We will in just a second. That is so nice, because so on road trips, you literally don't have to think about anything. The cooler's just gonna charge when you're driving, and then when you're not driving, it's gonna use its own batteries. Guys, isn't that cool? Yeah. Okay, here we go. We're going on a mission. We got two things. We got to get um, ice cream and free stuff from Harbor Freight. We need to change our temperature setting. We're going to go all the way to four below zero, and then we're going to change the cooling mode to max. So right now there's nothing in the cooler. We'll see how long it takes it to actually get to that temperature. Right now it's at 33. Do you guys think it'll be at minus four before we get to Marshall 20 minutes from now? I don't know. I think it will. Yeah. All right. Okay, good. Here we go. All right, we're going to see what we're at. Oh, goodness, you guys. It is at minus four. So it beat us to Marshall, basically, the temperature. And the battery is was just charging, but uh, we just shut off the car, so it shut itself off. But we gained about 8% charge since we left home. Oli just spotted that they have ice cream for $4.99 a gallon, which is exactly what we are after. Buckets of ice cream because... Uh, Mom wants uh, more ice cream buckets around for a certain thing that sometimes happens called the flu. <laughs> anyway, so there's two kinds of ice cream, you guys. Uh, there's vanilla or chocolate. Which kind should we get? Vanilla, vanilla chocolate, vanilla. Or should we get one of each? One of each. One of each. One of each. Do you like chocolate ice cream sometimes or never? Not at all. Have I one? like gross. I don't. And like mom likes chocolate ice cream. Chocolate. Yeah. Okay. Oh, like what chocolate. about you, Alana? What do you like? Chocolate or vanilla? Both? I, I think we should go with both. Okay, Zella, what kind of what kind of ice cream should we get? Chocolate or vanilla? Banana. Okay. Hi there. Good morning. How you doing? Good. Any answers today? It looks like it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thanks. Have a great Appreciate day. it. Yep. Nice. Very good. Here you go. Can you hold the banana? Don't squish oh, up, okay? is that heavy? Just hold them like that. All right. <laughs> so here we go. We're gonna put the ice cream into the Can four below zero freezer. Can you put it in? Oh, he said he knit back up. Okay. All right. Here we go. Set on top of that. Oh man, there's still lots of space. Yeah, there is. Oh, there's frost on the side. All right, that's good. The ice cream should say nice and nice and cold. Wait, watch what happens when you open it all the way up and then let go. 
it's kind of a slow close. All right, on to the next stop. Let's go to Harbor Freight, huh? Yeah! All right, get buckled, okay? Do you guys want um, some fries and cookies? Yeah! All right. Okay. That's right. Yep. It would be great. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Zella, what do you say? Please. Say thank you to Maple. Thank you for Maple. <laughs> <laughs> you know the present kind of thing? Yeah. You know what? Was she hitting you? <laughs> Why? Was she teasing you? Are you saying thank you for me? Oh, that was too loud. Anyway, so we're here. All right, we made it. Hiya. 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 Can I get one? Can I get one? They're the same. They're the same, okay? Don't look it. Well, we're going to check out right now. How are the fries, you guys? Good. Zella, where are your fries? I eat them all. Oh, I wanted to see them though. I know. Can you spit one out? I can't spit one out. Oh, okay, okay, that's fine. <laughs> I'm just teasing you. I'm in my boat. <laughs> <I can't laughs> it's okay, you can keep them, all right? <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. <sighs> I thought it was going to be a smaller looking roll than that. The better, right? yep. So we've been running around doing random errands and we've charged the right battery up to 100% and the left one is up to 8% despite it being at set to minus 4. You guys ready to go? Yeah. Alright, we're gonna go home. Let's do it. Alright, so we got some ice cream and cake. In she goes. We got mom surprise ice cream. We made it back, but it's dark now. <laughs> 